All right, here we are, another week around the trash fire. Your host, Matthias, along with the boy. John. Well, John, here we are. This podcast, end of the year. Got 2024 to look forward to. Yep, and I got that new year, new army, folks. Indeed. Also, you know, not a lot of news, surprisingly. You think they try to cap off something but they'll probably cap it off like on the weekend or something before next week they usually do that um with the holidays well have you got all your christmas stuff done more or less so no no (laughs) yeah i'm I'm the same i haven't gotten all mine done yet it's okay we got time we got a week But it's a very, very short news week this week. No Sunday preview. No video games to talk about. Just a few leaked images and some models that they uh, decided to show out. But there is one interesting news. And that is, uh, you know, rumors that have been uh, going around. And that is the Amazon and Warhammer uh, contracts finally being made official. So we're yes. finally going to be getting some Warhammer on what's the right word here? Bigger platform? On the like streaming platform. But yes, we were going to maybe it's time to see Warhammer really hit it with the the home audience. Yes. Not just their own stream, which, uh, you know, I hope Probably not, but I don't think it would really hit Amazon hard in their wallet if these shows were also streamed to Warhammer Plus. But no, I think it's going to be on the streaming service. I don't think it's just going to be in Warhammer Plus. No, 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 yeah. I'm saying, you know, they share. Oh, if they share? Oh, if they do both? Yes. Yeah, it's possible. That's possible. Because, I, like I said, I don't. I don't think Amazon will be taking a big hit because I don't really. I figure people who have Warhammer Plus also have Amazon Prime, so. Right. Kind of just double dipping, but. This is definitely. Gonna be the new medium to get more Warhammer players in. I mean. The way I see it, Warhammer is already. It's already hit popularity in the mainstream. I have a lot of people who don't even know Warhammer talk Warhammer. I think it's getting its traction in the nerd world, but you know, um, I don't think it's it's hit that critical mass yet where it's a common household thing. Like if you say Star, you know, like I don't think it's gonna be low of Star Wars, but something like Game of Thrones or what's something else like Fallout. You know, even Fallout is still in a niche in the you know outside the video game world so definitely and it's it's getting more warhammer is becoming more and more mainstream in the nerd world the geek world but in the world world that i'm not sure yet i don't think it's there yet and maybe the show will bring it there who knows i think it's there. Uh, in my honest opinion in the nerd in the in the world world in the world world yeah i i heavily disagree i like, so many people at work ask me what Warhammer is, because I have, like, a figure in my desk. Right? Oh, they're like, oh, what is that? Warhammer. It's like, oh, I've never heard of Warhammer. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think it's... I would disagree that it's... In, I would agree with you like, that it's not critical mass. Levels. But I think it's... I think it's a well-known oh. brand enough. Really? Yes. I do. Interesting. Yeah, I, I really don't see it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know a couple of people who don't play Warhammer. Do they play video games? Uh, yeah, they play video games. Do they like Star Wars and Marvel and all that nerd stuff? Hard to tell, you know. But they play video games. They do. There we go. That that's my argument, right? Like people who don't play video, like for something to be critic to be, I would say pop culture, it's. It would have to reach people who aren't nerdy or engage in nerdy activities. 
Like, even people who don't play video games know what Star Wars is, know what Halo is, or have heard of that, you know? Um, stuff like Call of Duty, right? You know, that that's something that, even if you don't play video games, you probably have heard of it. But I don't think Warhammer is there yet, where if you look at people who don't, again, engage in, in nerd activities, have heard about it. Well, hard and we'll... to gauge, I would say. I've seen well, it I mean, in our pop culture. I've seen it in... Funny enough, I've seen it in the, the, the Sunday morning cartoons or whatever, uh, comics. And some of those. So, you know, it's out there. Obviously, the joke will hit more for people like me who are in the hobby than probably some random Joe Schmo. But, you know, it's... It inches its way out there. Right, and I think I think the show will really bring it to something that, that's talked about outside of, of nerd culture. Right. Well, even though this has gone through, they say they don't have anything planned, really, because, you know, they got to do production and everything for the next at least two years. So... They tease us here with a movie or a TV show or both. And uh, my humble opinion, if you're going to start off with anything, you got to do Eisenhorn. I think that's the best way to start to get people introduced into the Warhammer setting. Eisenhorn is interesting because I think Eisenhorn is a great story and a, a really good way, right, of bringing people to the setting but you know all warhammer media exists to sell models that is something that i have heard spoken when i used to work for games workshop by higher ups so if that's still the case then eisenhorn isn't doesn't entice people to like hey what's the eisenhorn army you know well inquisitors well that's not really a thing right um so I would imagine something uh, on that same vein. The easy answer would be Space Marines. Well, I actually disagree. I, I actually don't think that Space Marines would be a good show to make because part of the what makes Space Marines a good impact, a big impact, is the human perspective. Right, seeing these ten foot tall, genetically engineered super soldiers, and having a human perspective would help sell that kind of mythos more. So I think I, I would imagine something if it's not like an Inquisitor adventure, it would be something like like a guardsman thing. Gaunt's Ghost. Gaunt's Ghost, that's a good one. See, yes. I wanna say Oh uh, god, why am I blanking on his name right now? The Commissar. Kaifus Kane. Kaifus Kane. I would wanna say Kaifus Kane. But since it'd be more of a comedy, I don't know how yeah how well that would transfer out yeah that i that i don't think would be good um i think caiaphas kane is more effective when you're more aware of the grim darkness of 40k and then you see this kind of comedic thing yeah so you know that that's a future yeah. project yeah yeah something like, like inquisitor eisenhorn or inquisitor slash eisenhorn related would make sense but i if i had to pick it would be some guardsman thing you know Kinda of because again, like they, I think Games Workshop would want people who watch the show to play, do the hobby, and then buy the models. Well, Unless there's an Inquisitor faction coming out, which or they, something they could capitalize on, that would well, be. That would be I nice. agree with you on the fact that you know Guardsmen are probably the best choice. I think Eisenhorn. In my opinion, is the best choice, but I understand where you're getting from if you're looking at it from a model perspective. Yeah, I, in in terms of the story, I actually think yeah, I agree. I agree that Eisenhorn or an Inquisitor thing would be the the best choice to just introduce people to the setting, but they'd have to tie it in with the models somehow if they do decide to do that. I think. Right. But who knows? Maybe they'll have their own thing. Yeah, I maybe. I assume it's, it's going to be live action. I assume. So they might do their own thing. They might adapt a story. Who knows? But all in all, if anything, they could just make an anthology kind of thing. 
that would be cool. I mean, Hamber and Bolter did that, and you know, I think that was very effective for what it was trying to do. Just one season, it's its own story, and then wrap it up with a nice bow, and then hope it does well and do another season with a whole different story if it's feasible. I mean, Warhammer has so many stories, so many characters, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to go on a limb here. The first thing they're going to do, probably going to be its own thing, if I had to guess. Wait, what do you, what do you mean? Uh, as in, it's going to be an original story. I don't think. Oh yeah. I don't think, I don't think yeah. they're going to pull any story. The smart thing would probably be to pull a story someone knows, but I have a feeling they're going to do their own thing. They're going to the first thing they make is going to be their own thing, and then they'll start adapting other stories. Yeah, that that piece is tricky because. I was talking to someone about this, about this actually with like comics and stuff, where if you just take what exists, especially something in Warhammer, you know, especially if it's a novel, right? There's no visual aid to, to go with. It's just descriptions which are driven by people's imaginations. And then you make a live action, you give it a visual thing. You risk it not being how people imagine it to be. So... That's the while on one hand you have the template of a successful story. You also again I think there's that risk of not living it up to how people view that story. Of course. So which is why I think it would probably be an original thing, like you said. Well, or or something that takes inspiration from from what's there, you know. Well, we won't. Not really gonna know. Until 2026, most likely. So Yeah, it's a long ways off. But good to see that coming out. In terms of other news, we got Old World. The last thing here. That, uh, this shows the mustering of the Grand Army. So they're doing Bretonians here. They give you a little composition list. Your characters, your core, your special, your rare. Mercenaries and allies. Yeah, this is interesting because they're bringing this back now where this is the only game, I believe, that's out right now where... Or game as in Warhammer game, Games Workshop game, where limitations are based on point percentages. I mean, allies exist like in Heresy and in Epic and in Age of Sigmar, I believe, as like a... Well, I could be wrong, but they they always stuff. But for sure, in Epic and in in uh, in Horse Heresy, allies are are limited by actually no, not even in Horse Heresy. It's it's just the the force. Or... Sorry, only in Epic where is limited. You can take allies in forty k, but you are limited to twenty five percent. Oh yeah, well there you go. Yeah, so it's it's only for allies, right? Where it's the twenty. There's a percentage thing. This is the the only the first game they're gonna have. That's well, they've done this before, but. They're bringing it back where it's your your army composition is based on percentages, not necessarily slots. Now, some units have a limitation. For example, you could only take one duke and one baron. You can only have one unit of knights errant per knights of the realm for Bretonians. You only have two two battle pilgrim up to two battle pilgrim units per thousand points, right? So there's that, but ultimately. What separates, you know, elite units and core units and characters is the point differences, or the point percentages, I mean. Our characters can only be half of your army's points, or like 25% of your army must be spent on core choices, and all that, which is super interesting and unique, which I, I like that they're bringing back. I mean, disclaimer, I'm hyped for this game, because it's finally coming out. I think I'll play, I was going to play Empire, but then it dawned on me how many models I'd have to paint. So I'll probably play Warriors of Chaos. But yeah, it's interesting that I'm, I like that it's a points thing. It's just new, you know, and I don't think it it's better for balance per se. Maybe it is better for balance because it's it's a flat percentage, right? Not just like number of units, you know, because like if you have the same number of, of let's say, fast attack or elite units, you know, not all elite units are the same. You know, a sentinel is not the same as a land speeder or 
uh, a Kazarkin squad is not the same as a Terminator squad. So being, you know, having them limited by the same number of elite slots is not as the balance isn't as even across the board. Right. Whereas with this, it's you know, it's it's points. Everyone has points. Might as well use that to separate elite units and 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 troop units and all that. So I I'm liking that that this is coming back. Also liking that mercenaries are coming back. I thought that was a super cool, super cool part of Warhammer Fantasy. I think it was fifth and sixth edition where it was a thing where you had not just ogre kingdoms, but you had like specific mercenary regiments. Like dogs there were of war special, is what they were dogs called. Of war. Yeah, you had units with unique rules and unique lore that were specifically mercenaries, and I'm glad that they're bringing that back. Well, that's where the uh, uh, the pirates. The yeah, long, long player pirate pirates. You have the burden men. You got. I think there was like this cool, like undead war band that was like skeletons from different races. That was that was pretty cool. So glad to see that that's coming back. Also, allies. That's kind of newer for fantasy. We don't really see much allying, or we didn't see much allying pre end times. So, you know, you can have empire stuff in your Bretonian army, which you know. That's cool. I mean, obviously this game isn't going to be a competitive game because Warhammer Fantasy Battle isn't wasn't a competitive game. It was super narrative based. And, you know, this will be the same, I think, where you don't include Empire Cannons because they're OP, but you include them because you, maybe you're having, your theme is it's a known alliance with your Bretonian kingdom, right? Maybe it's, yeah. But anyways, um, I'm, I'm glad that it's, they're having allies. That, that's cool. So overall, I am pretty satisfied about this this army thing. Yeah, I, I am. Remember, curious... Oh, go ahead. I remember in my time of playing uh, fantasy, not many people ever did mercenaries or allies. I don't really recall anyone ever doing it. I remember fighting a dogs of war army, but that's about it. No one ever allied anything. I think because when it was like sixth, seventh edition they started declining. They didn't have a modern Dogs of War like army book. Right. It's all like Which, PDF. Yeah, definitely hurt that. It's all PDF if you could find the PDF. Yep. But it'll definitely be a little bit more interesting to see what what goes on here. Kind of consolidating what they have in Age of Sigma right now, you know? Being able to ally all these certain groups, certain yeah. factions. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. I, I like how it's also not just like all order factions, you know, lizard men you can't really ally, right? Because that would make no sense. Wood elves, you know, they have the suspicious thing. Dwarves have the suspicious thing or special rule as they talk about. So, yeah, I think it, it's it's pretty neat. I don't think I'll be allying anything with my Warriors of Chaos army because I think Warriors of Chaos is the only Chaos army that's out, which is fine. So, very cool. Is there anything else in this article we're talking about? They do talk about. They give a a full look at unit profiles with their points options. Right. Let's see the dude. Um, fun Calvin. fact: They talk about Grail Knights. Grail Knights cost the exact same as they did in Warhammer Fantasy, which is thirty eight points. So I wonder how one to one it's going to be. They don't give the points costs for like the the characters and the the battle pill or the metal arms besides the upgrading specific models into the command regiment or the command section so yeah um but yeah i, I because the grand lines are the same i do wonder how close it'll be for in terms of points and you know by the and because of that like is it feasible to like draft a Warhammer Fantasy army and see how if, if it would be similar to an old world army, which I think it is. I, I made some Empire and Wars of Chaos armies recently. And I'm hoping that it's gonna be similar so I have kind of an idea what the army's gonna look like. Be back to fifth ed baby. Fifth edition. Mm-hmm. All right, so that is that. Anything else you want to talk about in this article before we move on? Uh, nope. 
this game is hype. All right, then. Well, we got a leak of the box set for Tomb Kings. Here we go. So this give us a nice, nice looking box art here. And then if we look at the back, we enhance. Oops, that's not enhancing. Oops, I'm done goofing. There we go. With this blurry image here, we see the Tomb King box. The only two new models they will have is the king slash prince on foot and the dragon. Other than that, looks like 10 skeleton horsemen. No, 20 skeleton horsemen. The dragon, the prince, king. A regiment of 15 skeletons, it looks like. And of course, the iconic chariots, which is the bread and butter of the Tomb Kings, in my opinion. And then obviously, you'll get the book, you'll get them templates, you get the dice, so you get the mega box here. Uh, I'm probably not going to pick this up just because I have everything here and I don't need any more. So even if I do play this game, uh, I'm not picking up this box. It'll be a good starter box for anyone who's trying to play Tomb Kings, though, I'll tell you that. You can never go wrong with chariots. Skeleton horsemen, I mean, they're good for flanking and everything. Help disrupt the lines, but they're not too powerful. Unit of skeleton warriors, can't go wrong with that other than building them. And... I mean, I have no idea how the dragon's going to play, but my experience in the past with giant monsters, not very good, especially when they get those, uh, those cannon shots through you, but yep, that's, that's what we're getting. We're, that's what we're getting in the mega box. So it's not going to be a two, it's looking like not a two player box set here. Yeah, that is super interesting that it is not it is not a two player box set. Right? Because they always launch games with a two player box set. I can't think of a game where they didn't launch a two player box set with in recent memory. Taurus Heresy technically is a two player box or advertises one, even though you should probably just get that for yourself, right? Because it's the same army and all that. But yeah, it looks like this will come with the rule book, the templates and the dice of the, the standard Corset stuff, quote unquote, or launch set stuff, but it'll also come with the just one army, which Matt talked about. So, obviously, I think obviously the Bretonians are going to have their own version of this. They're going to have a Bretonian box set, which is super cool. So, I think so. And so, it, it seems like Bretonians and Tomb Kings are the launch armies for this game. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is super interesting. I would say that that they're having a single launch player box. I mean, I, I think it's a good idea. Actually, it's it was always kind of awkward to split a box set of a new game when there's a rule book. So I think they're cutting the middleman and just having a single box for people to buy. I wonder if they'll have this for other armies, but it seems that probably won't. They did talk about how. Well, what I always liked about the two-player box set is that, you know, if you really wanted an army, you just find someone who wants your half, other army half that you're obviously not going to use, and, you know, you just trade trade the sprues. That's what I've always liked about it. But this makes more sense. Yeah, it's especially because it's a specialist game, and, and the issue you run into if you want to trade is what if no one wants the other half, right? Actually, Epic's having this problem right now because no one wants a Solar Ox, you know? Like, you know, eight, you know if, if ten people get the box, eight of them want Space Marines and two want Solar Ox, right? So, and this being a specialist game, that kind of make you just less people, right? Compared to AOS or 40k launch box where you could trade with people. And it, it is, I agree, it's, it's a fun thing. But... Yeah, for a specialist game, I think it, it's the good move to just have a single launch box. And 
Dude, this rulebook is hype. I don't know. I just love the fantasy rulebooks. I have, I kind of have all of them from like fifth edition up. So it's like four or five rulebooks. I have. Anyways, um, yeah, they're just super cool. So I, I am for sure picking that up. Don't need templates. I got a ton of those from the other games. Yeah, this is uh, this is. Are you this picking is up hype. the Tim King? Or are you picking up the Bretonian? The rule, just the rule book. I'm gonna play oh, Warriors of Chaos. Book. So. Oh, okay, okay. I'm gonna just to take advantage of the 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 amazing Age of Sigmar models. Yeah. Me too. I'll take advantage of those AOS models that I have. You mean your uh, your Tomb Kings? <laughs> yes. There you go. Uh, but yeah, that is you know what did they say? February. February is what the Twitter thing said. So, February coming out, maybe Grand Assault. So, That's the hope. let's move on to less epic news here. And let's talk about Heresy Thursday, where we got Malkadors. These little little tanks. You're gonna have to educate me on these tanks because I don't I don't really know anything about these. Uh they're just super heavy tanks that humans well actually in first edition space marines could take them but i think with the transition they were kind of relegated to just being for militia and solar ox so i mean they're cool and they don't have 30k models anymore as far as i know they don't produce them so it's kind of cool they're bringing them back in an epic although this is part of the longer conversation of when the heck are all these things going to get rules because like, a lot of things in Epic don't have rules. Now, don't get me wrong. Actually, no. Get me wrong. I am I am annoyed because, like, 30k launched with a ton of rules for, for vehicles. Some of which, I mean, I, I guess they had resin models and now they're making them plastic. There's nothing, nothing really new that was released besides the Kratos. But, like, for Epic, there's no rules for... I mean, I get if they had no rules for niche stuff like like Sikarans with missile launchers or command rhinos or even like Cerberus tank destroyers sure if they don't have rules for that fine at launch but land raiders have no rules artillery has no rules drop pods have no rules so right now there's formations in epic where specific because in epic it's not just troops you know elites it's like Poor choice, support choice, heavy armor choice, light armor choice, flyer choice, artillery choice. And there's some choices or slots that have no units. For example, light armor, which you know are like the saber tanks from 30k. There's there's no rules for epic saber tanks, so you kind of just can't put anything in that slot. Same goes for artillery. There's no space marine artillery rules, so also not in, don't have anything for that. So. I mean, it's kind of nice that they're teasing this stuff, but I think they need to just release the rules as soon as possible for for Epic, especially when, you know, the game is designed for 3,000 points and there's not a lot of units for 3,000 points. I mean, you could make an army, you could make a couple of variations of armies, but it's... They're all very samey. They're all... They, yeah, at some level, they're going to be samey. Especially when we know stuff is coming out. Like, we know there's Land Raiders. We know there's Medusas. We know there's Sabres coming out. And the Land Speeders and all that. You know, this is a delay... Caused by the delay, but... Yeah, I, I just... I do ask Games Workshop to just hurry up with those rules. Because the game really needs it, I think. Yeah, well, you know, the Forge World side of things, it takes takes a while. I don't know why Epic and 30k have this problem, but it just takes a while for this stuff to get released. There's a lot of times where we, like, talk about the 30k models, and I'm like, have we talked about this before? I don't remember this. And you're like, yeah, we talked about it like three months ago. I was like, god damn. It's just now coming out? Right. So, you know, right. I don't know why 30K has always had this delay problem, but if the That's game is suffering from the same, 
you know, army uh, additions need to be added to change it up, give more right. options out there. But yeah, okay, so that's uh, something GW needs to work on fast. But I understand they got old world coming out soon, kill team stuff you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a hype year 2024 but don't be slacking on some things gw i need to get some things out there as soon as possible Please. gosh i'm so hyped for this game this is not this is so weird because i i was i was smack talking this game for the longest time and you know to be fair like the, the lead up to this game was quite horrific but you talking about epic here no no, no sorry I'm, I'm looking at like the Pivoting it to old world. And actually even Epic, like I was pretty critical of the delay and all that, but yeah, I, I guess the the game being out is is neat. So, you know, old world and epic. Yes, well, we have one more news article to go through right here. New model Monday. We got the thing. Neferati's chief lieutenant. Which uh yeah. It's a badass model. I like it. I like the so giant ass snake. I know you want me. I just wish uh, my daughter's a cane had a cool looking yeah. model like this. I want to get it, but I just don't. I don't want the undead model. I just want the snake. <laughs> you could put like a daughter or a cane model on it. It's probably what I would do. Yeah. Like a blood priestess or something on it, but yeah, this is take take the take the vampire. This is a great model. This is a great snake model. I love it. Yeah, this is this model is great. You know, I do have this army, and I can see myself using her, unlike that other character, which was just another Veer Coast model. But yeah, she's unique. She's cool, and my only criticism is it's another name character. I think. Vampires have gotten so many named characters recently. I think more options for a generic vampire. But then again, like that just might that just coming from Warhammer Fantasy, where customizing your character was a big part of it. I guess in AOS, where you know they seem to have been, be having more named characters. So I mean that that's that's fine. But yeah, this is super cool. I I really like this model. Well, I mean that's the difference between Old World and AOS, right? Yeah, there's not a lot of Old World was yeah. you had a generic character and then you customize that character however you wanted. Mm -hmm. AOS, you don't really have a generic character. And if you do, you know, you don't really get, you don't really have that wide variety of customization that you could do like you could do in right. uh, Old World. Right. Everything is very limited and very narrow. Not to give you right. that many options. Kind of like what they're doing in 40k right now, right? You got so many lieutenants and captains. Each in each different kind of armor. Where in back then it was just like, yeah, I put this captain here and he has this, 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 this. And now he's a smash captain. Right. Now it's just like, alright, this captain only has a jump pack. And then this set of weapons, and that's it. Right. You, you can't customize or do anything cool. So that's always been one of my big things about AOS, my big problems. And I've I've said this before in the past, you know. AOS always feels unfinished. Like the armies, like they put out good starters out there, but I feel like there's another half of the army missing. Yeah, there's a lot of armies that need even just like one or two more units, you know, to to really be really be complete, feel complete. Yeah, and then like the and I'm I'm gonna say it, I'll, I'll say it. The laziest thing that GW does is they just give you a new character. Yes, I freaking hate it when they do that. Like, especially like, if it's an army with like a billion characters. Like, like a, I, I was. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say like a, a good example is Death Guard. Like yeah, 
Yeah. They have so many characters. Yeah. Oh man, they got a lot of characters. And that's that's just the 40k side. Like that that's a specialist. Yeah, yeah I'll say a specialist yeah. army, kind of like Thousand Sons, where, you know, they got rubrics, scarab terminators, zangors, and then everything else is generic space marine stuff that's just painted Thousand Sons theme. And then they're just like, all right. You want a new here here comes your codex and then you get a new character it's like that's great but can i get like havocs or something and then you know same thing for aos here i mean how many how many vampire characters have we gotten this year there's a well this year we got we got one you got the i think it was one was it one i feel like we've gotten a lot more maybe it was more I would say three at least because we okay. got a new character. I know we got a new character for the um. What was what was the board game called? Oh, if you count the board games, yeah, then there's definitely more. Yeah. Yeah, but I know the board game came out like last year. But I know we got a new character from the, from the board game this year. Another uh, whatever that bloodline's called. Yeah, the Virkos character. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about for vampires. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we got did him. Get one. We got that one. I know we got another nope. one. I just can't remember. Let it might see. have been Black Library character. Oh yeah, the Black Library character, Ekazar. He's super cool. Yeah, Volga the Outcast. Yeah. So um, got a lot of vampire characters this year. I'm just saying. And I mean, that's just that's just the thing that AOS does. Yeah. It's, it's very lazy, yeah. in my opinion. It's cool. I mean, they're cool models. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, well, some I, of them are cool models, but it's 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 funny because there's the paradox where I actually prefer if it's an if they had to do this. Name characters are actually kind of neat. Now that I'm backtracking, but because at least it's it's different, right? Like he's a special character, you know. I I get super like Bone Reapers, you know, freaking Bone Tomb King Storm Primaris Tomb Kings. They're it's so dumb because they have so many wizards and they just got another wizard. And it's not even a character. It's just another wizard that is pretty similar to another wizard that they have. And, dude, I am super annoyed by that. Especially because there's no, like, non-wizard character on foot for that army. Like, the, the skeleton general archetype, he's only on a horse. There is no on foot one still since launch, and yeah, that would that's that's a, that's a niche you should fill GW with this army and not just make more wizards. <laughs> so yeah, like at the very least, this new Lamia chick is a new Lamia chick and not another freaking Virkos character. I would be, I would actually be mad if that happened because there's so many Virkos characters now for that army. And like I said, anyways, yeah. Like I said, I I like the characters. Like they're all good because AOS has that standard of being very good. I mean, not all of them are great, but you know, you wouldn't. For most of them, you wouldn't be ashamed to put them on the table, right? But, you know, more more units would be appreciated. I know it's a whole balancing issue that happens, but let's be honest, Warhammer has never been balanced. So, and the fact that you're doing every, well, yeah, every six months with AOS updates, it's not like it, the, the, the thing is going to be too overpowered for long. So, all I'm saying, a little more unit variety would be nice. I yes. know we got it with um, Sylvaneth. They yep. got some pretty cool units. Even Night Hunt got a little bit. They got those. Uh, they got the bows. They got the, the bows. bows. Yeah, thank goodness. But that was that was like. Was that this year, LVO? I think so. Okay, so I mean. That was that was announced all the way back in LVO, but that was only one unit they got, and then they got the they got the big guy on the book, and then they got the boat guy. 
Was it a boat guy? I can't remember. They got two characters. Yeah, yeah they got that guy. So they they didn't escape it, but at least they got one new unit and a couple new characters, but uh I feel like I'm just going in circles here. So do you have any other things you want to say about this before we close this section off? Um more units, Games Workshop, please, like actual units. All right then. Uh that's all the GW news that I got. You don't have any news for anything else, do you? Mm, no, not really. Ewoks are coming out for Shatterpoint. Hooray. Oh, well. Yeah, I don't got anything else either. No. Shadow updates. No. Nothing else. That's all I really got. Shadow. Shadow of Brimstone. Uh, so let's just dive in. What are you? What have you been up to? Um, played some Star Wars Legion. There's a team tournament in February, so I'm practicing with my team for that and playing some some magic, some painting, some battle tech. When slowly say, working. When you say team tournament, what does that entail? So you have like a team of four, and you can't have the um no two lists can have the same unit. Which is interesting, um, and then you just play it at other teams. I, I'm not sure exactly how it's gonna work. All I know is that's the requirement. So I'm like, all right, cool. So it's like one of you is the team leader, and he sends you off to fight one person from another correct. team. Okay, this is correct. Not like a not like a giant mega battle kind of thing. No, no, that would be dumb. No. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure. Yes. Because I know. Or at least they used to back up in Pasadena. They had a they had a similar thing, where you know you form a team. Obviously, the team leader would pair you up with whatever person you're gonna go fight from the other team, kind of deal, for forty k. I forgot the name of the group, but Travis and I had thought about doing it. We also have another person in New York. Who's uh, willing to fly down to do one of those kind of uh, team games? But probably never gonna happen. Let's. I'm, I'll be honest. Just given my work schedule right now. That is fair. But I, I cut you off of what you were saying. So magic and what else? Uh yeah, Legion, BattleTech. Um, Thirty K League is going well. We are in month two right now. And work slowly working on these freaking cities of Sigmar. Um, I just can't finish them in one sitting. I have to like take a break. Maybe it's just because I'm not used to painting cavalry models, where there's like a lot of tiny detail, and it's like, oh, I gotta paint the saddle. Oh, I gotta paint like the stirrups. I gotta paint the the horse hair. You know, it's like there's so much things. But you know, I'm slowly working on it. Painting some epic on the site as well. Nice. So the 30k tournament. You want to explain that a little bit? Like, what does it entail? Like, what it, is it? Just a group of friends? Your store? Oh, it's a it's a store. So I'm running a league for geeky tees in Burbank. We currently have ten players, five trader, five loyalist, and yeah, it's been a, it's been a fun time. What are the armies? They're all space marines. Okay. All right. What are the <laughs> legions? Uh, we got Ultramarines, we got Word Bearers, Thousand Suns, Alpha, we have two Alpha Legion, we have Night Lords, Iron Warriors, Dark Angels, oh, actually, two Night Lords. Yeah, I think that's most of them. Yeah. It's a, a so, pretty good spread. Pretty good spread. A lot, a lot of, I mean, some duplicates, but not too many, thankfully. Right. Uh, well... For me, uh, I put my Night Haunt on pause just because uh, LVL is coming up. So I've been painting up my Warp Spiders here. Almost done with that. Uh, Got to put together a Autark. Need to put him, get him all painted up as well. And then I need to rebase my entire Eldar army because 
the sand particles with the Elmer's glue on it hasn't hold up well for the last uh, 20 years so Ooh. gotta get that uh get that updated and plus there's a lot of other models that i don't need to i need to repaint right eldar being my first army uh not not the best painted so it'll be it, i'm gonna need to do some touch up on a few people here other than that uh i played rogue trader I did like two sessions. I did hard mode, and uh, I kind of, I kind of regret doing hard mode a little bit because <laughs> it is hard. And uh, I'm gonna say that uh, Baldur's Gate three, it spoiled me. <laughs> like I wasn't expecting cinematic cutscenes like Baldur's Gate, but I was at least hoping that. Every dialogue option was going to be voice acted for me, but uh, it was not. So I have to make do with doing my own reading, uh, voice acting there for entertainment wise. But so far, so good. I like, I'm enjoying it. It is hard. Have you ever played Rogue Trader? I have not played it yet. Well, no, 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 not the game, the, like the actual. RPG. Oh, the action RPG? Yeah. Oh, no, I played Black Crusade and only War. Mostly Black Crusade, which is, it's the same rule system, but with different, like, characters and adventures and stuff. Okay, so then you you probably would have a better understanding of a lot of it than I would. Because I'm just like, man, this is a lot of text to go through right now. Just Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just to understand some of this stuff, so uh yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. There's a couple of times where I've just gotten my ass kicked, so I had to restart a couple of times there, but like everything in life, a couple of tries and I I understand. The other half of the part being, you know, getting the lucky dice rolls to actually do something. Because let me tell you. Me trying to hit someone with a 80% and then uh, whiffing every shot, that's that's infuriating. I hate that. I hate that system. Because how do you miss every shot with an 80% chance to hit, John? How do you do it? Dice game. I feel like I'm playing... I feel like I'm rolling the dice myself. But yeah, so I'm, I've, I got a couple games of that. I got like six hours into the game. And I really haven't made it that far, to be honest. Being the pro prologue and maybe a third of the way through the first planet that I'm going through right now. But having fun with that. Uh, just game night. Unfortunately, my host has uh, hurt themselves. So I haven't been able to game this week and... With holidays coming up, not looking like I'm going to be gaming until the new year at this time. Maybe I'll uh, hook up with some people and get some games in if they have okay. the time. But yeah, my normal Wednesday nights, not going to be happening. But, have you, but you, you've done the combat in Rogue Trader, right? With like the critical charts and stuff. Yeah, but in the game, what are you talking about in the? In the game. The critical charts. For Rogue Wait. Trader, the RPG, the tabletop. Oh, uh, to be honest, it's been a very long time since I played Rogue Trader. Oh, okay. So. And even when I did play it, it was very sporadic, so I'd always have to re relearn the rules. Because it was always like, all right, this month we're going to play. And then we'll reconvene like a month or two later. So my graphs on it was very thin back then. But right now I, I'm getting it down. I see, slowly I see. by slowly. But that's, that's it with me. Just 
It's gonna be paint, paint, paint. Get ready for the LVO. That's what I'm very excited for. I'm very hyped for right now. It's like I used to be able to go to a tournament like every every month, but now with my new schedule, since I work Saturdays now, it's like I mm -hmm. can't can't do can't do any Warhammer tournaments because that's usually when they're always held. So this is like the one tournament I get to go to now. I see. Once a year, so I'm excited to go. But I think I'm ready to call it. What about you? Pretty much it. All right, well, next week is Christmas, and the week after that is New Year's, so we're probably not going to be filming a show unless something very big happens. And if it does, it'll be uploaded irregular time schedule, but we'll see everyone in the new year. So until then, later. Happy holidays, everyone.